I believe I have a treat for you today. We're off to Croatia, yes, in the summer, when the weather is beautiful, and we're going to meet with Dejan Pavlinovic, one of Croatia's preeminent haiku poets. He's going to read from a couple of his solo works, one of which has just launched. Yes, you are one of the first people to hear this work. It's called Lifelines. More of that in a minute. Hello, I'm Patricia, and this is the Poetry Peacast. You are most welcome here. As I said, Dian Pavlinovic has come along to read from Down the Milky Way and his most recent, just published work, Lifelines. Details on how to purchase them will be in the show notes on the website. You're going to find out a little bit about him in the chat we have, but let me fill in a few gaps. Like, he's a member of an indie band, which frankly came as no surprise to me. But if you'd like to catch up with the band, I'll put a link to one of their songs, which is on YouTube in the show notes. While you're over there, you can subscribe to the Poetry P channel if you're not already. He's also on the editorial team for Iris Haiku magazine that's based in Croatia. And I'll put a link about some information on that in the show notes too. So as I said, you'll hear more about him in the chat and I'll add his full bio to the show notes. But as I read Dian's work and listened to him on this recording, I couldn't help but be reminded of a quotation by Shiki which he originally used about Takibana Akimi. You'll probably have heard me use it in full in the first of the Tanker podcasts this month. That's episode 36 of this series. I'm going to play with it slightly here so it fits my purpose. With regard to sight, sound and touch, there is nothing that he does not include in his haiku. That's how I felt anyway, after reading and listening to Dion. I hope you all enjoy the reading and perhaps go ahead and buy his book or books. For now, let's go and say hi to Dion. Hi. Hi, welcome back to the Poetry Bee podcast. Uh, you're not your first time. You were here last time with your friends, Tomislav Marotic and, of course, Michael Dudley. Yes, yes, that's true. So thank you for uh, for inviting me again. And so it's really a pleasure to be here again. And uh, at the same time, I would like to, to welcome your audience who is watching and, and listening, of course. Thank you very much. Now, as you know, initially I invited you back to read to us on your own from your book, which was published in 2016, Down the Milky Way. But by happy coincidence, since we started talking about doing this and getting ourselves organized, you have published another book, Lifelines, which I was Mm -hmm. highly honored to get a preview of. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So today, Dayan, we're going to have a reading from both of them. A double pleasure for us. Yeah. Great. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to do it in chronological order. I'm going to start mm-hmm. with Down the Milky Way. But before we get going, I wanted to read to everybody what George Swede said on the cover of this book. Because I think when we get going and we get into the reading and we chat between ourselves, people are going to forget that you're not a native English speaker. And mm-hmm. George actually said, I'm amazed at how deftly Dejan Pavlinovic uses his second language to create poems that resonate with the joy of being alive. And more than that, if I remember rightly, English is not your only second language. You speak fluent German as well. Am I right? Uh, yeah, das klopft, das stimmt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yes, uh, I have been, I studied English and German, so I'm an English and German teacher. I've been using both languages uh, <clears throat> Well, practically and literally every day. Uh, uh, English in the last, well, 10, 15 years, uh, mostly in school as an English teacher. German before that, but now I mostly use German as uh, 
during my uh, uh, pool I guide tours since I work as a as a part-time tour guide during the summer season, which is well just started. But there is a third language I'm fluent uh, with as well. Okay. Yes, <laughs> and that's that's Dutch because Wow. uh, I spent um, some part of my life, my early childhood years. Uh, Uh, of, or better say mid-childhood years in, in the Netherlands, in Rotterdam. My parents used to work there. So uh, I spent seven years in Rotterdam. And it was a great time. And uh, I actually speak Dutch with a Rotterdam accent. So at least the others say so. And I, I'm still in touch with Holland. I frequently go there. I have a lot of friends. So that uh, would be my third, let's say, foreign language, which I have been using, <clears throat> well, on a regular basis. Oh. Well, you know what? That probably means you do quite well over here, over here in Switzerland because um, you can handle the the German element of the Mm -hmm. of Swiss, Swiss German it, with the accent of the Dutch, which gets you fairly close to having the correct accent, I reckon, over here. Well, I, I hope so. Or although the 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 the, the Schwitz Deutsch is, is 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 a tough one, I would have to say. Yeah, I guess so. Um, yeah, I think you just have to live amongst it and try and sort of immerse Get along. yourself in it. You know? But you've got a head start because you've got those two, two other languages. You've got a better start than me. <laughs> Anyway, let's get back to to um, down the Milky Way, which mm -hmm. Mm you published in around about 2016, I think. And the foreword -hmm. That's right. was written by one of my idols, Jane Reichold, Mm which -hmm. means, Diane, But this is a very special book because it must be one of the last books she would have reviewed because she, if I remember rightly, sadly left us that year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yes. So um, Well, mm -hmm. you're highly honoured. yes, uh, I, I, it, it's really a privilege uh, to well <clears throat> to to have uh, such a great author and, as you mentioned, idol and a role model who who um, um, supported me and who liked the poems when I got in touch with her, uh, just out of the blue. to be honest, uh, and, uh, and she really dedicated her time and, and spent time reading it and giving a short review. And then, and then uh, she, <clears throat> she, she was also willing to, to write um, a, a foreword. Uh, well, the, the poems uh, from Milky Way are actually uh, are covering the period from 2007 until 2016 when it was published. This was the Uh, the period uh, actually where I started to 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 write haiku in two thousand and seven. Uh, besides Jane Reichold, I have to mention also a, a prominent Croatian poet uh, and uh, the founding editor of Iris Haiku magazine and uh, one of the most the leading promoters of haiku poetry in Croatia, Georgia Vukolic Rožić, who also wrote the the afterword. Uh, And then George Sweet that you mentioned and Chen Liu, uh, they contributed with their uh, the, their short blurbs. I'm, and I was I was and still am really grateful uh, for the support of such respectable authors and poets. Um, and um, uh, the book also received very good reviews, among others in in, in Frog Pond and Blight Spirit. If we talk about some prominent magazines, uh, so everything uh, all in all, it, it kind of. showed me, well, let's say that I was on the right track and it motivated me to uh, to immerse deeper into the, the beautiful world of, uh, of haiku. Brilliant. Uh, I mean, yes, Yeah. you, I was going to say to you, I mean, other than Jane, you obviously had um, some very de decent reviewers um, on, on the book, on the book cover Mm and, -hmm. and writing within it. Uh, now, Jane did say, you, you've mentioned her forward there. She Mm said -hmm. anyone interested in proving their own work would do well to study Dejan Pavlinovich's haiku. So you know what? We're going to follow Jane's advice and have a listen. So Mm -hmm. I'd be highly honoured if you do a reading, please. Mm -hmm. I will, if I may, just uh, give a short intro, uh, -hmm. just just to kind of give a little flair. Um, uh, well, the first book was for me special, and 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 most of the poems concerning the topics 
Um, uh, in other words, there, there, there's a significant amount of those related to children, babies, uh, childhood, fatherhood, and, and, and motherhood as well, uh, which is not accidental because during the period of uh, composing and assembling the poems, uh, my, my, my two boys were born. So, uh, so uh, I, I suppose it was quite uh, obvious that many many poems were that were were related to uh, well uh, to 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 those topics, uh, and the choice that I uh, made for this uh, first reading, uh, as as you will hear, are actually related to uh, well to 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 those ones, uh, and I will read twice uh, if that's okay. Yes, please. Uh, in Croatian and in in uh, in English. Good. Mliečnom stazom od zvijezde do zvijezde maleni prst. Mliečnom stazom od zvijezde do zvijezde maleni prst. From star to star, down the Milky Way, a little finger. From star to star, down the Milky Way, a little finger. I dalje gladak nakon tisuće poljubaca, obraz djeteta. I dalje gladak nakon tisuće poljubaca, obraz djeteta. Still smooth after thousands of kisses, a child's cheek. Still smooth after thousands of kisses, a child's cheek. Poteče iz majčinih grudi noćna tišina. Poteče iz majčinih grudi noćna tišina. Flowing from mother's breast nightly silence. Flowing from mother's breast nightly silence. Here we go. Thank you. I just want to go back to that first one. Two things. Uh, I just wanted to say I love the imagery in that one. From star mm -hmm. to star down the Milky Way. Little finger. Yes, uh, <clears throat> it's also one of my favorites. Uh, well, among the, if we can make a list, uh, but really one of my favorites because it, it it brings me right back to the right spot and the right part of the day when <clears throat> this flashed really, uh, and this was one of the rare ones which uh, was an instant. Uh, instant haiku, which doesn't, as you know, doesn't uh, often happen. And it was behind our house on a field since we live on the suburbs of Pula. Uh, and it was uh, uh, dusk and me and my little boy were walking and we were listening to all these insects, this, this, this uh, beautiful summer uh, orchestra of insects. And then he uh, he was showing uh, uh, at the stars, and, and this was kind of an uh, image which froze and, and the whole emotion. So it's a very dear one to me. Yeah, I can I can well imagine it's lovely. Um, just in in the construction of it, I'm looking at the Croatian and the English. Mm -hmm. Is there a slight difference in the way it's constructed? Yes, well, uh, well observed because um, uh, compared with the English uh, version, the the second English uh, line, which is down the Milky Way, is the first Croatian one. So, um, uh, and now you mentioned um, when, when I personally write haiku, since I write equally, I would say both in English and German. Sometimes I, oh, sorry, English and and Croatian. Uh, it, it's quite an interesting uh, um, merge of the two languages in, when it comes to translation. So sometimes the the first uh, original, the original version is Croatian, and then during the process of the translation, then the the translation, the English version is better. And then I go back to the original Croatian and, and then remake it, or the other way around. So I don't have. I can't say that I write only in Croatian or only in English, but it's it's a kind of a merge of of both languages, and this transition or translational process is is where where, where uh, quite interesting things happen in, in a linguistical point of view. And concerning the rhythm, uh, uh, the Croatian version functions and sounds much better when it's uh, 
uh, reversed as as you noticed. Mm, yeah, it, that I wanted to just come back to you and, and ask you about that one and the interplay between um, translating it because I'm, I'm guessing you translate them yourself. Yes, 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 exactly. Um, except for the uh, Japanese, which we'll come on to a little bit later. But, right. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but for this one, it wasn't wasn't relevant. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, isn't that interesting that you? the rhythm dictated that you change, or I'm presuming it was the rhythm dictated the change from the English to the Croatian. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yes, that's right. And uh, <clears throat> I think um, that um, uh, reading the poems aloud, uh, at least for me, is, is really important to to hear, to literally hear the, the, the flow, whether it's natural or whether there are some obstacles, and not only to, to hear it in the mind, but also to pronounce it and then well, to make it come alive uh, in the in the form of the sound. So uh, I think that's really important, yes, the rhythm as well. It's, yeah, I think it's very important. I often think that if you, when you say it aloud, if you can't get the words out, mm -hmm. then you've got something wrong. Exactly. Yes. Stumble yes. over it somehow, then you then something, you need to go back and, and think about mm -hmm. something else. That's right. Anyway, get back on track here. Um Thank you for those and, and for that thought. And I have a poem that I'd like to hear you read. Well, mm -hmm. I wrote to you and said I'd really like to hear you read a lot more of them, but we don't have the time. So um, I have picked one out and I chose it because it's a theme very familiar to haiku writers and um, readers of haiku, cherry trees. Mm -hmm. But you've written an original haiku, which I want to come back to afterwards, but you've included a kigo that's delicately included in the poem. It's not um, a sort of standout Kigo like, you know, spring day or, or whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nicely included within the, the poem, which I really love to see. I, I really love, the, love that way of writing a Kigo into a poem. So I'm going to ask you, you know which one it is, so I'm going to leave mm -hmm. that. <laughs> All right. Umrzlo jutro na golej trešnji procvalo sunce. Umrzlo jutro, na golej trešnji, procvalo sunce. Frosty morning, on a naked cherry tree, the sun in bloom. Frosty morning, on a naked cherry tree, the sun in bloom. Now, I mentioned the Kigo, so you've got your naked cherry tree. Normally, mm -hmm. um, when we got the cherry tree, we, we're thinking of spring, but you you've sort of made it vaguely ambiguous with your frosty morning, because I know a frosty morning here could be um, late autumn, could mm -hmm. be late winter, early spring. Um, but you've also juxtaposed that with um, the naked cherry tree and the sun in bloom. So you sort of made a switch for us. Do we expect the cherry tree to be in bloom? And here you have the unexpected, which to me is... What, what did Jane Reichold say? Um, we should look at your work. Um, or she, she didn't. I don't think she specified why, but I think that's possibly why that you you know you bring the unexpected mm -hmm. often into the poem. And um, mm -hmm. I, I wanted to ask you about that this this poem in particular. Where were you going with the Kigo and with the whole the whole poem? Yes, it, this is a. Um... An interesting and in a way special poem, and uh, and uh, in a way also uh, before before I say a bit more, uh, I have to say that uh, uh, what I found interesting with haiku poems that uh, they always bring me back to the to the specific sp to place and time when they were uh, observed or 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 or, or um, experienced, uh, and as I remember with this one, and this was. Um, uh, actually, uh, um, a winter uh, morning. Uh, so, uh, and what I find interesting with uh, this poem is that I didn't want to uh, to make it so so blunt with the usual cherry trees um, uh, and 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 the springtime. And uh, this one is uh, actually um, the the cherry tree in itself is in a way combining uh, two seasons: uh, springtime, which is uh, not visible but it, it's kind of touchable or 
or somewhere behind in the winter time when it was actually created. And it, we are talking about a simple uh, naked uh, uh, cherry tree. And a, a touch of the sun is always uh, welcome. And it was a beautiful uh, winter morning uh, when it was created. And, and this ambiguous uh, ambiguity that you mentioned is, is something which, which I also find uh, quite, quite uh, uh, appealing, um, a touch of mystery or something unspoken. Yes. Absolutely. Um, thank you. Thank you for that. And now we are going to turn our attention to your new book, Lifelines. So mm -hmm. for the benefit of everyone who would be thinking of buying it, Tell us a little bit about it and where mm -hmm. they can buy it. Well, actually, uh, we are conducting this interview at the right time. So, uh, because uh, the book has just been uh, released, uh, literally uh, fresh uh, out of the oven, <laughs> to put it in this way. Uh, so this is my my third book, book uh, but my second solo book. So after the Down the Milky Way and the Nexus Haiku. Uh, my second uh, uh, solo collection, The Lifelines. Uh, and uh, well, first of all, I have to say that I was really lucky and privileged to have uh, a number of collaborators during the, the creation of the of the book. Uh, and it's very important. They're all friends, uh, very dear people. Uh, and, and this is how I also like to collaborate uh, with others. Uh, and they're all accomplished authors themselves. So uh, Michael Dudley, uh, who, uh, who is a renowned Canadian haiku poet, who was also uh, your guest as well, uh, he he wrote the blurb and he helped with some English uh, proofreading, just in case. Uh, Ikuyo Yoshimura, uh, the Japanese scholar and haiku poet and translator, she she translated the poems in, uh, in Japanese and wrote a nice blurb as well. Uh, Nina Kovacic, who is uh, one of the most prominent Croatian um, haiku poets, also um, uh, uh, writes beautifully. She wrote the foreword. Uh, Thierry Dubois, a French artist, a friend as well, who, who, who made the illustrations. And uh, Matija Plovanić, who did the cover design. Uh, and Sanela Prishko, who was the co-editor, who helped me uh, with some uh, with a second kind of uh, perspective on, on the poems. Uh, and the publisher that's also important is, is Tondak, which is an association from Pula, which combines uh, music uh, and poetry programs uh, on an international level as well. Uh, so, uh, so I'm talking all about people who are um, in this kind of world uh, surrounded by me. So, uh, and that that was really important for me. Uh, the book itself uh, uh, is. Uh, as is divided uh, as I did with the previous one uh, in in four parts, um, and all four parts are named after the first line of one of the poems, which is included in that chapter. And uh, <clears throat> since I like this kind of circularity, so uh, uh, in life generally, uh, I try to order the poems also in this kind of way. At first of all, atmospherically and kind of and chronologically according to a kind of vibe or feel or associations, uh, which means, uh, and, and all of the four parts are in a way, uh, at least I think so, uh, uh, related to the four kind of major stages of life. So the part one is lifelines, which includes associations to birth, beginning, uh, naivety, and so on. Uh, the second part is called the uh, breath of air, which is mostly related to youth, uh, development, strength, life, first love, and so on, and security. Uh, the third part is coexistence, and it's uh, uh, the part I, I, I suppose the two of us are living <laughs> right now, which is kind of knowledge, uh, maturity, which also includes uncertainty, crisis, and and, and, and and things like that. And the final part, um, the closure, which is not the closure in a literal sense of uh, literal sense, uh, includes poems with um, related to uh, melancholy, wisdom, calm, but also end and transience, uh, transience, uh, circularity. Uh, so, um, so uh, this was how I kind of liked to order them, uh, but uh, a very major and important element uh, is uh, 
that in each of the, 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 the four parts, there are three points who are especially stressed. Uh, and I try to <clears throat> graphically uh, stress them, in, in this case, in italics and in other fonts. And they're related to uh, to the the death of uh, both of my parents, who passed away in a short time between 2019 and, and 2022, during the peak of uh, uh, the existence of those poems. So, um, so and actually, I dedicated this book to my late uh, late parents, as as I did as I dedicated the first book to my uh, to my family, my wife, and to two kids. Uh, so uh, the element of, of Transience and, and death is actually, uh, as a nat natural integral part of life, is something which is 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 really important, and and that's why the poems that I chose to read, as you will see, uh, and hear, are uh, actually directly related to uh, to those uh, elements related to 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 the, to the parents and parenthood and uh, <clears throat> and and death and transience, and but uh, life goes on and so on. This is very true. Hard as it is at the time, life does go on. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, that's yeah. how it is. Yeah, that's how it is. Just like the Sakura. Now you're here and then you're there or not. But uh, that, that's uh, that, that's normal. And uh, <clears throat> uh, but uh, the. Also, I have to mention the element uh, related to death, uh, since it was related to to very severe uh, diseases, uh, and uh, it was not uh, only something that unfortunately they had to go through, but also the rest of the family, my brother and me, and then of course my my uh, my, my kids, and and uh, since we live in the same in the same house, so uh, and it was uh, it was quite a tough time to see how uh, they were. Uh, um what's the i can't find the correct word how they were slowly uh leaving you know because mm -hmm. due to illness uh and how they were reshaped into something that they weren't before and uh and it took some time to you know to 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 recover from this and then uh, and a haiku actually and actually those poems helped me a lot and in a way although this sounds maybe uh, weird uh, I it was kind of chronology of their uh, departure in a way, and the after um, after aftermath of it as well. Yeah, I, um, I can sort of understand where you, where you're coming from. Um, I, I I didn't lose my parents I, in short order, so there was there were many many years between losing one and then, mm -hmm. but. but um, I think it's been 20 years since I lost the first one. I'm just about mm -hmm. ready to write about that now. Nowhere near ready mm -hmm. to write about the losing mm -hmm. my second parent, which is only, I think it's coming up two years now. So um, for me, it wasn't necessarily a cathartic, cathartic experience being able mm -hmm. to write about that particular um, mm -hmm. part of life. But by the sounds of it, it was for you. It helped Yes, it was. Uh, you know, it, you're also questioning yourself, and 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 then you 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 you're getting aware of your age and uh, the time mm -hmm. you have in front of you, what you have accomplished. Uh, you you're looking at your kids, so you're you're kind of stuck. So it was a moment where where, where I was kind of in a limp, uh, pretty much lost <clears throat> emotionally, but uh, uh, it made me stronger. And actually, I, I I would say I embraced life even more. And I have to stress that these poems don't necessarily mean that that, that, that I I'm I wrote a dark book. You know, no. I just think I just included consciously included so three pieces each. So in uh, the, the the book has one hundred poems. So uh, twelve of them are uh, direct references to to this period of my life. And they are also inside each each uh, cycle or each each part. They are <clears throat> ordered, not one after the other, but in the beginning, in the end, and in the middle. So, you know, just like these little punches that life give you uh, every now and then to remember to remind you that well, uh, okay, uh, you know, you only live once. So, uh, be responsible. You know, be good, be nice, mm -hmm. do something good. Yes. Yes, definitely. 
Um, yeah, let's, I tell you what, um, I think I, I read the foreword uh, again, mm -hmm. this time by uh, Nina Kovacic. Mm -hmm. Kovacic. Colleges, that's right, yeah. Hey, I'm not doing too badly today on my your, name. Your, your creation is becoming better and better. <laughs> well <laughs> no, <I've> done. Got, <laughs> I have one one name left that you're going to have to do for me, though. But anyway, All right. um, when I was reading, I came across this sentence by Nina, uh, who mm -hmm. said, of, of your writing, he, you, achieves mood and atmosphere through synth, synth there you go. See, I was going to get caught here. Through synesthetic connections, synesthetic, anyway, mm -hmm. people know what I mean, mm -hmm. connections and interweaving of sound, colour, scent, taste and touch in different combinations. And that sort of whetted my appetite. So I've gone and whetted everybody else's appetite. Dan, no pressure. Mm. Let's <laughs> see um, your high you live up to this wonderful, delicious mm. Thank you. <clears throat> Linije života Moje ostarijele ruke niz očeva rebra Linije života Moje ostarijele ruke niz očeva rebra Lifelines My aging hands down father's ribs Lifelines My aging hands down father's ribs Očevo odijelo Kako ga je ostavio za sobom bez svog birisa. Očevo dijelo kako ga je ostavio za sobom bez svog mirisa. Father's suit, how he left it behind without his smell. Father's suit, how he left it behind without his smell. Godišnica smrti. U ladicama i ormarima tražimo odgovore. Godišnica smrti. U ladicama i ormarima tražim odgovore. Death anniversary. Searching for answers in drawers and cupboards. Death anniversary. Searching for answers in drawers and cupboards. Procjetalo drvo. Progovorilo jezikom pčela. Procvitalo drvo, progovorilo jezikom pčela. A blossoming tree speaking in bee language. A blossoming tree speaking in bee language. Cikade njeme, postajem svjestan svijeta. Cikade njeme, postajem svjestan svijeta. Cikada silence. I become aware of the world. Chicago silent. I become aware of the world. Yes. I think, um, I don't think these are, are what, what did you call them? Dark poems at all. I mean, they are poems about life, aren't they? But if people were mm -hmm. worried that it was going to be um, very dark, I think the one about, um, let's see, a blossoming tree speaking in bee language. Yes, the first three uh, are <clears throat> uh, from this these elements that I mentioned before, uh, the the opening poem and, and uh, lifelines, and also uh, that's also the name of uh, of the book. Yeah. But uh, uh, the last two are well, uh, haiku uh, every day na nature uh, and and and. Uh, and, and these these ones are um, uh, well in, related to insects, which which <clears throat> I personally find really uh, so interesting creatures. And uh, uh, the one uh, I wrote in bee language, this was also one of these uh, very dear points to me. And uh, you know, when you experience this kind of flesh. And I was standing below uh, my neighbor's uh, tree, who's got a very tall tree, and this was in the middle of uh, spring. <clears throat> And I wasn't aware of 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 the the noise that the insects, the bees mostly, uh, were um, uh, were making, uh, and and it, it's something that you should record. So it has such a large decibels, and the same thing is with the cicadas. So the, these two are in a way related to this uh, this element of sound that 
uh, a group of insects can can make and create and uh, and that this sound is kind of white noise and that you only become aware of it when it isn't there. So I find this really fascinating. And I really love cicadas and, and, and crickets. And these are my favorite ones. <laughs> and after all, my blog name, my blog is also called Smiling Cricket. So it's not accidental, I would say. <laughs> That's very true. Um I, I have to tell you, I went for a little walk before we um, sat down to, to record this. And it's mm -hmm. the time, um, so we're recording, as you said, we're, we're recording this a little bit early and the roses are in full bloom. And I came across a whole bank of wild roses and I stuck my nose in and then realised from the noise around mm -hmm. me, a bit like your, your trees, that the rose bush was full of bees. Absolutely, mm -hmm. you know, all over it. It was, it was beautiful, and I have to report, mm -hmm. I did not get stung, so that was um, mm -hmm. that was even better. So the, yes, it, some lovely, lovely poetry um, in this book as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. So I wasn't disappointed as I read through. We we haven't mm -hmm. uh, given people a huge number of poems because obviously we'd like them to read the book and to to buy the book, but I think we've given them enough to see that yes. You have used this synesthesia um, to good effect throughout, but just it, it's a lovely, lovely, lovely book. And I have one poem again that I'd really love to hear you read because as I read through, I thought, oh, this is just so me. So again, you know which one I, I asked mm -hmm. you to read. So would mm -hmm. you read it to us, please? Yes, I'd be happy to. Korak po korak, blatnevin chizmama, Primištam brdo. Korak po korak blatnjavim čizmama primištam brdo. Step by step, I move the mountain with my muddy boots. Step by step, I move the mountain with my muddy boots. So you like hiking? Oh, yeah. I mean, well, as you sort of have to here, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. If you don't like hiking, you're a bit stuck. But yes. I have several pairs of hiking boots for very different situations. Mm -hmm. and I am <laughs> well known to be um, bringing the mountain down to the down to my home um, on the on the bottom. In, into into the living room. <laughs> <laughs> I draw the line there. I take them off. Oh, of yeah. the, but but yes, uh, they could well bring the mountain mm -hmm. into my my living room. Mm -hmm. But no, they certainly bring the mountain to the front door of my house. So, um, or the right. back of my car mm. quite often. <laughs> there you are. A little souvenir, yes, from 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 the nature. Yes, but that, that that's that's how it how it works, and uh, yeah. no complaints. Uh, no. In my case, in my case, uh, only the wife complains. But uh, you know, uh, uh, but I'm trying to 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 to. To leave the the mountain uh, in a, um, outside before we enter the house, it doesn't always work. But <laughs> no, it doesn't always work. You're quite right. Um, to, uh, yeah, I, I won't get you started on on um, on the mess I leave outside the door, whether I've been out on the hiking on the hills here or um, out on my bike. I had a lovely morning's bike ride this morning. It, it had been raining and the puddles were enormous. So um, my bike and I headed, veered into the puddles and we had great fun with, with so we, I came back quite muddy all over, let alone my boots. So there you go. Thank you very much for giving me that. And now I know the, the word for step, korak. Korak, korak. exactly. Korak. <laughs> Thank you it sounds much. like a step, korak, you know. Yes, korak. it does. Yeah. It's yeah. A really yeah. It has this rhythmical kind of... Uh, uh, feel yes it does and i was as i was listening to you read both the english and the croatian i was and going back to what you said about growing up in holland mm -hmm. i was wondering did your dutch accent affect the way you speak any of your other languages i suppose it did uh but i'm I was always questioning myself, uh, but um, uh, the objectivity comes from from the native speaker who listens. And 
and and and, and many uh, uh, speakers notice the Dutch accent, uh, slight Dutch accent in my English pronunciation, as I can feel it in the Dutch. So I think it is enrooted somewhere over here. Uh, of course, it's, I will never have the real uh, pure native English, uh, whether American or British pronunciation. But you know, uh, but I, I but I can also I can feel this uh, this this Dutch little element, because uh, when when you listen to Dutch people uh, speaking any other language, it's, it, they they can really it's really difficult for them to lose the the accent. So it, it's something that. That, that is innate. And I suppose it's the same case with, with me, who is a Croatian who spoke Dutch as a first language for seven years and get, got back and got confused and I had to, and took some years time to get back in, uh, into track to, to, to choose, okay, am I here? Am I there? Well, now I'm everywhere. <laughs> so in a way, the, the, in a way it's difficult to, uh, for me to, uh, to say where your roots are, and I would say my roots are everywhere where I uh, I gained some 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 insight and some years of living, uh, which includes Holland, which includes Croatia, and uh, also the part of Croatia where my parents uh, were born, where we used to go to Granny's, and that's in Dalmatia, in the southern part of Croatia, on the coast. And I'm here in Istria. Yes, which is also, I believe, a, a not well. It is a tourist place because you you're involved in the tourist industry during mm -hmm. the summer summer months. So yes, it, uh, Istria is is, is is a very interesting region in Croatia. So it's not that big. It's a, the biggest peninsula, uh, and uh, and but you know during the summer it's always uh, busy. But uh, off season, uh, it, it's a great place to go uh, hiking uh, to go. Uh, cycling uh, to go into nature and and and, and uh, Pula where we live is a town with a bit less a bit more than 50,000 inhabitants and in less than 10 15 minutes you're in nature so so nature is in is, is a very important element uh, uh, for people who live here uh, not only uh, nature as as hikers and and um, recreational for it but also nature uh you know living from nature so everybody has a little garden as we do so i just planted tomatoes and waiting for and then in the next month or so to for them to grow and uh, so everybody does is connected with the soil and earth so that's that's really important yeah that's quite important to me and yes i've mm -hmm. got my tomatoes planted too uh so we'll see i can't eat them there i'm allergic to them but i grow them every year um just out of spite. <laughs> I ask them why they are in theory my husband's tomatoes, but as mm -hmm. I look after them, I feel mm -hmm. that they, they are mine. Um, but yes, I, I do. I do enjoy getting my hands dirty in the soil, and I, I, su I suspect that's because two generations ago my family were, were farmers, so maybe mm -hmm. that's still still with me somewhere mm -hmm. in my genes. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you very, very much. It's been a real pleasure listening to you read your work again. And um, I would just say to people, do go to the show notes where I'll put all the details on how to get hold of the book. But before we leave, I want to leave you with a thought that comes from the afterword of Down the Milky Way, which, as you said, Dan, is written by another Croatian poet, one mm -hmm. we know from Poetry P. Um, mm -hmm. but I'm going to let you pronounce her name again, Diane, because I'm going yeah. to let this yes. one the hard one. Uh, yes, uh, her name is Đurđa Vukalić Rožić, and as I mentioned, she uh, in the last decades she's been one of the most prominent Croatian promoters of of, of haiku poetry, uh, the founding editor of of Iris Haiku magazine. Uh, she's a wonderful woman. She helped me a lot during my beginnings, and she was also uh, always willing to translate uh, haiku in English uh, for all the newcomers. So always there for everybody to help. So a remarkable, wonderful uh, woman and and author and poet. Indeed, a very good poet. I can agree with you there. Um, and what she said is, for haiku to really be haiku in every sense of the word, 
built on understanding of the world that has been lived by the poets of the Far East throughout the centuries, and then again, being acceptable and understandable to the Western world, created in Croatian, but equally assuring in English. For all this, one has to be a master. And all I can say is, you are definitely a master. And they have been a real treat to listen to. So thank you very much for coming along today and reading to us. It really has been great to see you again. Thank you so much, Patricia, for the kind words and, and, and most of all for giving me the opportunity to present my work and and also uh, uh, now uh, Lifelines, my fresh new uh, child of haiku poetry book. Uh, and, and and many thanks to, to, to your audience, to everyone who was uh, listening and watching. And uh, yeah, and that's it. Yes. Ciao. Thank you. Thank you. Was that a treat? Well, it was for me. Let me know what you thought. You can tell we recorded this a little while ago, although my t-shirt was nice and clean, so I got it out of the wardrobe to wear it specially. My tomatoes, which we were referencing, are now being eaten by my husband, not me. But I'm enjoying the raspberries. I'll let him have one or two. And as for me riding through puddles, well, as you know, I've had a bit of an accident and those puddles are going to have to wait for a wee while. But I have managed to disguise my black eye and the bruising on my face. It's going down anyway. It's a lovely shade of green. Thanks for joining Diana and I today. I know he would really love to have some feedback from you. So if you have his email, send it to him. If not, send me some and I'll pass it on. If you'd like to sponsor the podcast with a membership or buy the podcast a coffee, I'm saving to see if I can make it to the West Coast of the US next year for the Haiku North America conference. You'll find details on the show notes. All donations gratefully received. Also a reminder that the Poetry P journal Tendrils, that's our Haibun journal, is out. You can purchase it um, in print form or as a PDF, and as usual, I'll stick the details in the show notes. Next week, I'll have more original poetry for you. We'll hear what poems Linda has chosen from the Poetry P video prompt. Have you added your poems to the prompt this month? You can write as many haiku or scenery as you like, and leave them in the comments section for Linda to read. So with that reminder, I shall leave you. Until next week, keep writing. And don't forget to check out the show notes for the links in today's podcast. If you need anything, just email me. Ciao.